G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about relative motion, and in particular I'm going to be talking about relative motion when we're dealing with rotating reference frames. So what does that mean? Well, let's consider this little animation I'm playing right now. We'll notice that a point A is free to move on a plate that itself is moving and rotating. So my question to you is, what is an expression we can derive to find the absolute velocity of point A? Well, it turns out in order to do this, we need to define a few things. First of all, I'm going to define an angle theta to describe the angle our reference frames have rotated at any particular instant. I'm also going to define a few more things. I'm going to define a unit vector i and a unit vector j along our rotating reference frame like this. And I'm also going to define unit vectors capital I like this and capital J like this. Notice that because this reference frame is constant, it doesn't move, that means that capital I and capital J are also going to be constant. Whereas because this reference frame is moving, that means subtly that I and J, these unit vectors, are not constant. And that'll play a big part in the proof I'm about to show you. All right, first things first, let's find the absolute position of point B. This is it, this is gonna be RB. It's your position of B relative to our fixed reference frame. And this right here is going to be the absolute position of point A. This is gonna be RA like this. Now the position of A relative to B is gonna look like this. And I'll try not to clutter up the image too much. It's gonna look like that. This is gonna be RAB. And we can tell from vector algebra that RA is gonna be equal to RB plus RAB. So let me write that down. It means that RA is going to be equal to RB plus RA relative to B. Now this formula wasn't too hard to derive, but where it gets tricky is differentiating this beast to find the absolute velocity of point A. On the left hand side we'll get DDT of RA, and if we differentiate the right hand side we're going to get DDT of RB, plus ddt of ra relative to b, but rather than write ra relative to b, I'll just write that ra relative to b is just going to be a distance x in the lowercase i hat direction and a distance y in the lowercase j hat direction. So I'll write it as the vector xi plus yj. And to make that even clearer for you, let me actually write these unit vectors in pink like I did before. So this is going to be xi plus yj, like that. Okay, well, let's go through the differentiation. Well, we know that this differentiates quite nicely into the absolute velocity of point A, and that's what we're trying to find. This differentiates into the absolute velocity of point B. And the reason why these two differentiate so nicely is because we're dealing with positions relative to a fixed reference frame. That's why these differentiate so nicely. But this term won't differentiate so nicely, and that's because our unit vectors i and j change with respect to time. So we need to apply the chain rule now to find out what this evaluates into. So let's apply the chain rule to this term right here. This will be x dot, that's the derivative of x, times by i plus x times by the derivative of this unit vector. I'll just write that as d dt of i. Now this term when it's differentiated, we can apply the chain rule to it and that'll turn into y dot times by j plus y times by the derivative of j, d dt of j just there. Okay. So interestingly, in order to solve this problem, we need to find out the derivatives of unit vectors. So what does that mean? Well, let me draw the unit vector i just here. It's this unit vector, I've just drawn it over here in a larger scale. So the thing to notice about a unit vector is, it's got a magnitude of one. And we can describe this unit vector as the sum of other vectors. So I'm gonna describe it as the sum of this vector plus this vector. And of course, because this right here is at an angle theta, that means that the magnitude of this vector must be one cosine theta. And the magnitude of this vector must be one 
sine theta, which means now we can say that this unit vector can be written as one cosine theta i plus one sine theta j. So let me write that down. It means that our unit vector lowercase i can be written as cosine theta in the capital I hat direction plus sine theta in the capital J hat direction. All right, that's the most important part of this problem. If you can get that, then the rest of this tutorial should be pretty easy for you. Okay, now let's consider this unit vector J and let me draw it just here. If this is the unit vector J, then we know it also has a magnitude of one and we know it can also be described in terms of other vectors as well. We know this is theta, we know this is 90 degrees, which means that we know that this right here is 90 minus theta, which means that we know that this right here is theta, which means that we know that this is going to be um, a magnitude of one sine theta, and this is gonna magnitude of one cosine theta, which means that we can write J as a negative, negative sine theta and positive cosine theta like that. So we found expressions for our unit vectors and let me just move that across to make some space. There we go. All right, now we just need to differentiate these guys. Well, it turns out that if we were to differentiate them, ddt of i is just gonna turn into minus sine, minus sine theta times by d theta dt, applying the chain rule once again, which is gonna be omega. And this term differentiated is just gonna turn into cosine theta times by d theta dt, which is also gonna be omega, like that. And we know that d dt of j, of j is gonna be equal to, uh, let's see, minus sine turns into uh, a negative cosine theta, negative cosine theta, and we're gonna times that by d theta dt, which is omega. And this is gonna turn into negative sine theta times by d theta dt, which is omega as well. And so what's really important to notice here is that our derivative of our unit vectors can actually be written in terms of our original unit vectors. And let me show you how to do that now. Well, our left-hand side is VA, and on our right-hand side is VB. Now, this term is just x dot times by i, fair enough. But what is x times d dt of i? Well, it's gonna be this term, which is the same thing as j times by omega. So I'm gonna write this as, so I'm gonna write this as plus x omega times by j, right? I've shown that this is the case. If you multiply omega by this, then you get that. So that's this term evaluated. What about this term? Well, this is gonna be y dot j, can't do anything about that. What about this term? This is gonna be y times by d dt of j, which is gonna be this times by minus one times by omega. So I'm gonna write it as minus omega um, y times by i, like that. And in fact, I wanna keep the colors consistent. So let me actually write that in pink again. This is gonna be i, and this right here is gonna be j, like that. j, like that. All right, we're one step closer to solving this thing. Let's start grouping some terms and simplifying. On the left-hand side, we'll have VA. And on the right-hand side, we'll have VB. And if we group these two terms together, we'll have X dot I plus Y dot J. Can't simplify that any further. All right, now let's try and group these two terms together. Well, this will boil down into minus omega Y I, minus omega Y I plus X omega J x omega j. So it looks like I've dragged you down a dead end. It looks like we can't simplify this term anymore whatsoever. But let's see what we can do. On the right hand side we'll have vb. And just here we'll have a term called v rel. Rel is short for relative and it's a very fitting term. Because if you look at these terms just here, this is x dot in the i hat direction and y dot in the j hat direction. Which means we're dealing with the velocity of a relative to our spinning plate, right? So in other words, we're dealing with the velocity of A relative to B as if omega was zero. Now this term here looks like it definitely can't be simplified, right? It looks like a complete mess. 
But have faith, because it will turn out that we can simplify this to be omega cross RAB. And if you don't believe me that this can be simplified into this cross product, let me actually do the cross product for you real quick. I'll do it in, um, I'll do it in orange. Omega cross RAB will simply evaluate into the determinant of I, J, K. Now, omega is the vector 0, 0, omega. Because omega will be spinning in this direction, from the right-hand rule, that means the vector will be pointing out of the page. So that means our vector for omega will be 0, 0, omega. And RAB, as we discussed before, was x in the j direction, y in the, sorry, x in the i direction, y in the j direction, and 0 here, of course. So if you were to perform this determinant, you would get i times by, let's see, 0 minus omega j, minus omega y, sorry, minus omega y, um, minus j times by 0 minus, 0 minus omega x, um, minus omega x, and then plus k times by 0, plus k times by 0. And so if you were to simplify this more, this will turn into minus omega y i uh, plus omega x j like that, which should be exactly what we've got here. Yes, it is. So that means that you can actually write this as the cross product. And there you have it. This is our final formula for the absolute velocity of point A when we're dealing with rotating reference axes. Now, um, in order to gain a sense of intuition behind this, I strongly recommend doing some example problems, and I'm going to be covering them now too. Cheers.